On today's episode, I want to talk to you about the differences between an ERV and an HRV, which one to choose for your houses that you're building, and a couple of myths on these units. So here's what we're talking about right here. This happens to be Panasonic's fairly new IntelliBalance 100. This is an ERV, and let me give you a quick uh, tour of this unit before I get into the differences between HRV and ERV. But basically, this is a fresh air machine. The idea here is this is a balanced ventilation mechanical system. So this is going to bring fresh air into your house, and it's going to do it in a way that's going to filter it and bring it in in a measured way and put it exactly where you want it in the house. So you notice there's four ports on this unit. What's happening here is this is what's bringing the air in from the outside. And when the air comes in, it's going to go through this nice big thick filter. We've got a good filter here. And then this is the center of the unit. Whether you're buying an HRV or an ERV, it's going to have a core like this. That airstream goes through the center of this core and then this motor right here pushes it into the house in the specific places where you might want it. Typically you're going to put your fresh air maybe into a bedroom because that's where you're going to spend most of the hours in your house. And then the other airstream, this is going to bring air from the house on this side. You're going to usually take it out of your kitchens or your bathrooms, places where things might be a little more humid in the house. And then it's also going to go through this core, but the two airstreams do not touch. And then it's going to be exhausted out here. So we like these units because it's going to filter the air coming in. It's going to bring it into a measured amount. We can actually adjust the dials right up here and decide how many CFM we want. But it's this core that's doing all the work. And whether you're buying an HRV or an ERV, the core is pretty similar. And typically the airstreams are not going to touch one another. They're going to go through this core separately. And just in between them is a thin membrane. Now an HRV stands for heat recovery ventilator. The idea is when you're bringing in fresh air in the wintertime, especially let's say if you're in the cold north, it might be zero degrees outside. You don't want to drop zero degree air into your bedroom as fresh air. Instead, you want to warm that air with the outgoing stream of air. That's why they call it a heat recovery ventilator. There's less of a penalty as you bring that cold air in because it's going to be warmed up by the outgoing stream. Now, if you're in the south, you're going to want an ERV, an energy recovery ventilator. What's happening with this unit here, this ERV, is it acts as an HRV as well, but when the airstreams have different humidity levels, let's say in the south where I am, a lot of times it's 80% relative humidity outside, but I'm going to keep my house at, let's say, 45 or 50% relative humidity. As those airstreams cross in this core right here, this is what's referred to as an enthalpy or an energy core, it's going to move the moisture from more to less, meaning we're going to drop some of that humidity from the incoming air as it comes in. Now the beauty of an ERV is it also acts as an HRV. An HRV, on the other hand, does not move moisture. It's only a heat recovery. So which one do we choose? If we're in the north and we're in a really cold climate, and it's not particularly humid most of the time, an HRV is going to work. And typically HRVs are a little less expensive. If you're in the south, if you're anywhere in Florida or Texas or Louisiana, these are, these are areas of the country that get really humid, especially in the shoulder seasons, the spring and the fall. You're going to want an ERV. And like I said, the beauty of an, of an ERV is that it also acts like an HRV. These are great little units. In fact, this Panasonic, uh, is a really good price too. You'll see a link in the description below for this particular unit, but these can be had for under a thousand dollars. Now you've got a couple of things to hook up with this and check out, I'll put a link in the description of how we actually installed this in another house that I built a while back. But these are pretty amazing units and I like that they're balancing the air. There's other strategies for fresh air, but none of them are balanced like you're going to get when you buy an HRV or an ERV. Now the problem with these units though th that I've seen out there is there's a lot of myths. There's a lot of misunderstanding about what these units do. I hear people saying, oh my ERV is going to dehumidify my house. There is nothing inside here that's dehumidifying. All it's doing is moving, moving the moisture from one airstream to another. So there's no dehumidification. And in fact, typically an ERV is going to potentially raise the moisture level in your house. And that's okay because, again, if it's 80% humidity outside and let's say 40% inside, that incoming air is going to have less humidity, but it's still potentially going to be higher humidity than my indoor air. So I may be bringing in 60% humidity air instead of the 80, but it's still more humid than my house air. So 
On my houses, I also have a separate dehumidifier. If you're in the north, again, you want an HRV because we want to reduce that, that penalty from that cold air coming in. The last myth that I want to bust is that an ERV, if it's used in a cold climate, it is going to freeze up. Now, the manufacturers have solved that years ago, so this is no longer the case. Maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, an ERV might, but that's no longer the case. So if you're deciding between the two and you're in a mixed climate, let's say, an ERV is a better choice because it also acts as an HRV. If you're in Minnesota, you're probably not going to need the ERV. An HRV is fine. But these boxes, they're doing amazing work. They're bringing in the fresh air, they're filtering it, they're putting it exactly where you want it to go, and they're doing it with way less energy than if you were using, let's say, an exhaust-only strategy, or if you just had a fresh air input to your return side of your furnace. These are amazing little units. Guys, thanks for joining me today. Good topic. I get asked these questions all the time. Link in the description below for this particular unit if you want to see this one on Amazon. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. See you next time.